Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Heroes Never Die, your one-stop spot for all things Overwatch. I am your host, Tumbley Drunk, at tonight on episode 233, we're going to kind of expand our discussion that we just had over the weekend following BlizzCon line. So, on Sunday, we had Adonar, myself, as well as Spider for kind of like our post-con discussion about everything that we learned in regards to Overwatch 2. And while there was a lot of stuff to kind of like digest at the time, you know, we didn't really have uh, a a enough time to really like flesh out some of the burning questions that we still have about the direction of the game and what it could implicate for Overwatch 1 in the meantime. Since, you know, we still don't know what exactly Overwatch 2 is going to be coming out. So the plan tonight is, and R and I are going to be discussing uh, a range of topics, uh, including, like, the scope of the PvE, uh, any sort of ill effects that we could see from the RPG talent trees when you compare the PvE side of the game to PvP. Uh, you know, just overall changes. Maybe the game is changing too much. What sort of... Uh, revenue we could see from the pve side like how are they going to try to make money off of hero missions and whatnot and any potential bleed over that could happen since the fixation right now is so fixated on the pve content because that is the selling point of overwatch 2 mm -hmm. man that's a mouthful but you know there's a lot to dissect tonight so before we get there I do want to thank everyone who is joining us tonight on Twitch for our live show. And of course, thank all of our repeat listeners out there. Of course, on hand, as always, is my co-host, Ednar. And Ed, you know, it's uh, it's still a bittersweet feeling. You know, we, we got more information, honestly, more than uh, I think either of us really anticipated to hear out, uh, out of BlizzCon line. Mm -hmm. But for every answer that we have, or just more of a better understanding, there's still a lot that we still don't quite have the full grasp on. So it's kind of like we're teetering back and forth. Like we're still on some aspects, but we still have those reservations right now, especially knowing that for the foreseeable future, which has been kind of accustomed here uh, for quite some time, you know, we're in a drought period when it comes to heroes, maps. <laughs> it's more like years. Yeah, I mean, if we're being like honest, we'll, we'll get, I'll get into that uh, in the bits. Uh, but, you know, like, uh, first impressions off, you know, in regards to what we got from the behind the scenes, like, how surprised were you by just the amount of information that was packed into, but it was like a 45-minute discussion at that point i i mean they gave us some good information but it what they basically told us is and, and i don't want to speak for all gamers here but is stuff that people generally don't give two craps about like like they they spent a lot of time talking about the you know the 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 way things look and the updated graphics mm -hmm. and that they're adding weather and and stuff like that which is fine and dandy but like a vast majority of gamers are like no i just i just want a good game like however you bring that to me fine it's it's just right now it's like giving people more reason to just complain about it um they did give us two new maps, but, you know, we don't even know what kind of maps they are. Right. Like, <laughs> like they gave us a lot of information, but they also at the same time gave us really no information. Um, but I, I wasn't expecting that much information from the, the Overwatch 2, if you can call it a panel. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a pre-recorded, you know, developer update. So, it, you know, they, they, they gave me hope, but the fact that they didn't announce more, like, they didn't really talk about new heroes outside of Sojourn, who they had already announced last BlizzCon. Yeah. Um, 
it, it leads me to believe that this is farther off than any of us are thinking. Mm-hmm. Like, I think early 2022 is a stretch at this point. Yeah, I feel like a lot of that is just based upon the fact that, you know, when we're talking about kind of like a going back, doing an overhaul on uh, on the guns with the gun pass 2.0, you know, making sure everything is fit to the environment of where you're actually firing the weapon, mm-hmm. just making the game feel more visceral with basically every action that you have. You know, it, it really felt like it was a reset. And it's kind of conflicting. Obviously, when it comes to a sequel, you you want the game to feel different, but you don't want it to be so unfamiliar from what you're used to seeing because that can just create a, a sort of disconnect. And we're already starting to see a disconnect uh, from like the PvP players of Overwatch. Um, where a lot of people are kind of looking at it and they're like, oh, well, this this is basically the engine upgrade. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll get the roll passes, which we talked about. Uh, maybe some more drastic balance changes uh, on that front, too. But they're not entirely sold on the PvE, which, you know, is is bad from the Blizzard sense because, like, obviously they want money. <laughs> <laughs> they want to. They want to ship the product out to people, uh, But I, you know, it, it's so hard because there's this tension right now where the PvP players or people that are going to fixate on PvP and don't have the interest in PvE, they're starting to feel like they're kind of being pressured out or they're being bled out, where they're kind of feeling that sort of neglect. Because all we've been hearing about are the hero missions and what to expect from there, which, you know, I get it. Like, the PvE aspect of Overwatch 2 was a driving point that was not really sold completely when it was announced back in 2019. But after watching the -the behind-the-scenes footage, you know, they went out of their way to ensure that they hyped it up as much as possible with all the groundwork that they're doing. You know, we got a better understanding of the scope of the hero missions and the campaign of what's to come in Overwatch 2, where, you know, a- as I said on our on our recap show, we basically went from saying, like, all right, we got, like, maybe, like, 8 to 12 missions, and all of a sudden they're throwing, like, hundreds. Yeah. They're just throwing it's... that out there, but we don't know if that is obtainable. We don't know if that is just... You know, the the big picture, like, you know, initially when Overwatch League came out, you know, they always wanted a global league with X number of teams. And, uh, you know, I, I, I still don't think we're at that vision fully at this point. But, you know, hearing hundreds of missions at the time really, really made me think more about it. It's like, I mean, that's that's a bold number to throw down, but that's a lot of work to put in. And not to mention, like, you have to differentiate or just make these missions not feel like they're one and the same. Like, they need to stand out. Yeah. It's, I guess, to to go back to what you said about, you know, the PvPers feeling left out. I guess my question is, what the hell else do you want? Like, honestly. Like, they've already said there's probably going to be five to six new characters released with Overwatch 2. Mm -hmm. There's new maps. There's a new game mode. 2CP is confirmed gone from competitive. What else do you want from the PvP side of things? Because you know what? You don't have to buy Overwatch 2 to get all the PvP stuff. You don't have to buy Overwatch 2 to get all the new heroes, all the new maps, all the updated everything. So you don't actually have to spend any money and you get all sorts of stuff for PvP. Right. And you know, you know what? They're like the people who cry that out are just, I want my cake, you know, you know, and I want to eat it too. Like it's it's just like they want everything. And you're essentially getting everything if you have no interest in PvE. This is Overwatch 2 is purely a P if you buy it is purely a PVE game. Mm-hmm. 
and you know it's it's yes a lot of this pvp stuff has been left out of it and that's for the simple fact that overwatch 2 is not pvp it's not so yeah it's gonna add new characters and new maps to pvp but that's what you've been clamoring for anyway so whatever um as far as the missions go i i'm yeah i think i don't think you want to run into the same like what you're saying is the repetitiveness Mm -hmm. of uh and, and the best example that comes to mind is world of warcraft is every time you have a quest to go into a cave in world of warcraft it's the exact same quest so you know you're like, okay, go into this cave. I know exactly what I need to do. And that is the repetitiveness of like, okay, let's not do this. Um, now, how they do that, we just don't know yet. And again, the other thing we don't know is how are you going to get people to keep playing this? Mm-hmm. And that, to me, is the biggest factor in all of this. Right. Is what what draws me to play this. Yeah, because, like, even going back to your, your quest point, like, we have heard a little bit about objectives that we could be seeing in regards to the hero missions. And they, they basically, like, brushed over, like, half a dozen at the time, which doesn't sound like a whole lot on paper. No. Um, And, you know, like... <laughs> I I, I, I would okay. I, I would hate to think that when they're like we have hundreds, mm-hmm. meaning that each hero has like fifteen. So each hero has fifteen missions, and they may be like, and this is my my fear is they're the same fifteen missions for each hero, but they're with like you have to do them with different heroes, so that creates hundreds of missions. That is my big fear with this. Well, I'm pretty... If I'm not mistaken, I think the hero missions, you can play anyone. It's the campaign ones. Oh, the campaign that ones. Were, you were restricted. Yeah. It also will be interesting to see if they have hundreds of missions, how many maps do they have? Like, to get hundreds of missions, you need a lot of maps. This is also true. Uh, but, you know... Circling back, you know, we were talking about the PvPers feeling left out. And, you know, that's not to say that it's not without merit, because, you know, you can even look back at the the snail's pace of content release that we have seen the past couple of years alone. You know, you looking back at the last year release was Echo, uh, who was teased back mid-March 2020, later released in April, and that was the only hero that we saw throughout the year. Uh, and then even going back to 2019, the only hero that we saw was Baptiste. Uh, and, oh, you know... They have they have absolutely every right PvPers to be, like, left out right now. Yes. Like, I, I agree with that. Like, right now, PvP who are all, like, PvP, 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 right now is horrible for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was also uh, Sigma in between, but, you know, we're basically approaching two entire years uh, with three heroes, and then even even if you factor in maps, you know, it was basically, like, Havana. Unana. Yeah. Uh, was in, like, April. It was released in, like, May of 2019, and I know we had Paris a couple of months prior to that, but it's just... You know, you're, you're used to playing these other games that update more frequently or just release content on a more frequent basis. And, you know, I, I understand the reason behind it. Obviously, part of it is just they were put in their assets and, you know, their focus has been on Overwatch 2 and it has been for some time now. And the other part of it, too, is just the fact that the game's engine in its current state has its limitations. And because of that, they're just not able to push out the content that they're wanting to work on. Because <laughs> a lot of yeah. this stuff requires the new engine, 
which is only going to be coming with Overwatch 2. So it's just like, you're put in this spot where, okay, like, we're going to have events, we're going to have our challenges uh, sprinkled here and there, but everything else is basically at a halt at this point. And, and you know, that's a problem, because right now, the the player base as a whole is bleeding, and it has been for some time, and a lot oh, of yeah. it is just due to the slow release of content where, sure, you might see, like, spikes here and there whenever, like, a new event pops up. Probably not as noticeable with the weekly challenges, just because those aren't as prominent, or, you know, there's just not as much to obtain in those as opposed to, like, full-blown events. But mm -hmm. it's just, it, it's been a rough go, and you have seen... Uh, a lot more people just kind of tuning out, like, playing other games or just not playing Overwatch entirely. And now they're just kind of, like, sitting on their hands, just wondering, like, all right, when is Overwatch 2 coming? And then all you can hit him with is, you know, the, the dot, 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 because you have no idea mm -hmm. when that's going to happen. Yeah, no, you have no idea when that's going to happen. And I, I guess my big question to you, Totem, is... How much of this are you putting on COVID? Like, I mean, obviously COVID delayed Overwatch 2. I don't think anybody's going to deny that. Okay. But, like, do you give them a small pass because of COVID? I think the bigger thing for me is going back to BlizzCon, playing the demo, and just... I'm not going to say, like, I didn't enjoy it, but it didn't wow me as much as I would have wanted it to. And the reception that Blizzard got off the demo probably scared him shitless, where they're like, okay, like, we really need to go back and overhaul this thing. Yeah. Because we're not getting what we thought we would from the community. And if we keep going forward with the state that it currently is, we're not going to be able to sell this game to people. Like, they're not going to buy into it. Yes, PvE is something that the fan base has wanted, but it was just so bare bones at the time that it just didn't have a lasting appeal. Mm -hmm. And then COVID hit. And, you know, I'm not going to say, like, it, it didn't impact that. Um, obviously, we still have seen patches and stuff happening uh, throughout the pandemic across titles. But we've also seen major titles coming out that were completely effed from the get-go. <laughs> that, were, that, were, that were really hyped for, for a long time. And, you know, they, they don't want to themselves in that sort of situation because at that point you're you're gonna lose that much more of, of the fan base at that point so you know as a fan it's it's frustrating knowing that you know it, it still feels like we're a ways off you know i like the information that we have heard but i i want to see how they're going to entice the PvP players, if that's the plan at all, or if they're going to keep focusing and just spitting out PvE content. Because we, I don't think, you know, talking like Overwatch 2 and beyond, that we can continue to be like, all right, well, we only get one map, one hero a year, and then find that sustainable. Like, yeah. like I don't want them to be like, all right, well, we're just going to release more missions and then everything else is basically on the back burner because they're focusing on the PvE side of the game. Yeah. What is, so here's what how I think COVID affected it is I think they announced it at BlizzCon, the the 2019 one, and their plan was 100% to announce the beta at BlizzCon this year. And because I don't think they would have come out and said hey, this is the last hero we're going to release before Overwatch 2. Because, like you said, the all the new heroes and maps and stuff like that are on the new engine. And they're not set up for this old engine. And I don't know, I don't think that they can just be like, hey, recreate all this stuff in the old engine 
so we can release it and stuff like that. That's just not the Blizzard way. Right. Um, but I fully think that they expected to announce beta at BlizzCon this year. When it would have happened in November. And then you're looking at the game releasing probably May-ish, June uh, of, of 2021. And I think that was their honest God plan. And then COVID hit. And then, you know, you, you had to take, at that point, probably four months, five months of just getting used to everyone, like, working from home, doing all that stuff, like, h- how you share things and, you know, it's stuff like that. Just like everyone who had to work from home had to do. Mm-hmm. That put them back even farther. And then they, I think, tied in with that is what you said is, you know, they, they got feedback from the BlizzCon and they wanted to overhaul a lot of things. And a combination of all that just is leading to this. So, I don't know. It's It, it will be interesting to see when it actually comes out. We are supposed to be getting more information here in next month or the month after, March mm-hmm. or April. So, we'll see what uh, Papa Jeffrey CapCap has for in store for us. Yeah, I mean, he uh, he said like, "Hey, we want to be more on on the button in regards to uh, communication with the community." But we'll we'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. Seeing is believing. Uh but anyways, obviously, looking at the PVE side, you know, we did get a glimpse at the new talent tree system, which replaced kind of like the one in three kind of current talent trees that uh or talent choices i i should say that we currently have in world of warcraft retail now we're kind of going old school you got the three different yep. uh talents basically or branches yep and you know when i saw that i was like okay this is gonna be interesting so maybe like they could just do just about anything on how they want to customize characters specifically for the PvE side of the game. Now, the flip side of this coin is there is a very real chance that that aspect alone could have an ill effect on hero design releases. (laughs) You know, time it takes to get them into the game because not only are they having to look from things at just a base level for the PvP side, now they have to figure out all right, well, what other things can we do with this hero to help differentiate from the other 32 that we currently have in the game? And that part scares the shit out of me. I I don't know if they're going from like, all right, we'll start with the art, and then we'll go off of that, or if they already have an idea for a hero concept in mind, and then they start fleshing things out. Maybe it's a combination of the both. Yeah, it's it will be interesting to see you know like the biggest issue i see is you're gonna see all these talents and and whatnot come to these heroes is people are gonna get their armchair dev on and be like well if we had this talent in the pvp side it would be it would fix them and like no shut mm. up like like that's not how this is supposed to work out like this is more of the you do funky weird stuff. It's not supposed to be meant to be balanced for PvP. You know, like one of the things they sh- they showed was uh there's a, a a tree or whatever you want to call it, talent tree that uh made mercy a battle mercy, right? And that's just not something that I I think you know we want they're they're bringing back the five man reses and nobody wants that (laughs) back in pvp but they can pull it off if you talent it the right way in pve you can do so much more because you are balancing them by doing the talents for pve only you can have uh you can balance it completely different and you obviously have to have two completely separate teams doing the balance work um they cannot be related at all because you don't want any of them like influencing the other um because the pvp people need to need to deal with that and you know 
ideally both of these do great but when you when you look at the pvp or pvp from blizzard standpoint in overwatch whichever one gets the most play is going to get the most love and you know what if if the, if it becomes a pve game then so be it and that's going to be their main focus but like it's just i don't know i i'm scared about how the community will react well to, i part of that to too. The, the talent trees yeah but when when you know we're talking about hero releases obviously in the past it was always pvp first so a hero mm. would come out and it would either dictate the meta or be a counter to something that at the time was becoming an issue within the game. So I want to see moving forward if they're still going to balance specifically around that aspect in regards to hero design or if it's going to be vice versa. Like, I, I want it to say PvP first when it comes to hero releases and just yes. add in something new and then you branch out and figure out what you want to do on the PvE side of the game. Uh, but, you know, yeah. you mentioned talents not being, uh, you know, viable throughout both sides of the game. I would I would not rule it past Blizzard to be, all right, you know, we, we have seen a number of shooters in the past have loadouts where maybe they just decide, okay, we're going to take this talent, this talent, and this talent, and they'll create a loadout for a hero and then release it in the arcade just to see... If that's something that would actually interest people. But I don't think we're ever going to get to the point where they're crossing over and just making talents universal across the board. Because then everything just, you know, to, to throw it back is a, is a clown fiesta yeah. at that point. And there would just be way too many intricacies for like hero compositions, what each hero could do, how to counter certain comps. You don't want to make things so big brained that nobody can really understand uh what to do or how to react in that sort of situation. Yeah, it's it's you don't want to I could see them doing an arcade mode for this to to appease people if there is that much of an outcry. But like you said, I would not be surprised if they did like kind of like a loadout system uh, with some of these talents down the line, but that's probably years down the line. Like, I'm not talking this year or next year. That's just, not going to happen. Just imagine it. Having total mayhem, and you know, we hate... I'm not a fan of that mode at all. Yeah. But just imagine. Total mayhem is worse than <laughs> 12 Roadhogs one hole. <laughs> it is. But just imagine you're you're playing Junkrat and Total Mayhem. And you're specced mm -hmm. into the dual grenade launcher. <laughs> yep. And just the amount of shit hitting the screen. I would love to see how that would play out. Uh, but I don't think it would make that mode any better by any stretch of the imagination. But like yeah, there there are ways you can you can kind of balance that is okay, you give Junkrat dual uh launchers. Well then he loses the ability to use traps. Right. Or they just decrease the damage per weapon. I don't I don't know if you should deal with the damage in, in this instance, because you know, the damage could be great, but you lose all utility. Mm-hmm. Like you can't get anywhere, you can't trap anyone. You're you're basically a sitting duck. Um. So and and doing stuff like that. That I mean, I I think could be something down the line, farther farther down the line. Once they they try and realize things, it's you know I'm just I'm just interested to see how big this PVE can get, because you know there are a lot of games that that are pbe focus that have some pvp you know uh, like i mean you look at uh, call of duty what did call of duty start off as that didn't start as pvp it was a like you know it was missions and and stuff like that i mean destiny is another one where the story is is king 
but they also have PvP that's very successful. Um, WoW, I mean, before the MDI, WoW was, you know, the only time you could see esports for WoW was in PvP. Mm-hmm. Arena. Yeah, arena battles, stuff like that. So, you know, there, there's definitely ways that they can manipulate things like this. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm interested to see how they go with it. But we again, we just don't have information. And that's and that's the frustrating part. Like, we could be completely right, we could be completely wrong, and nobody has any clue. Well, we're never wrong. No, we. <laughs> yeah. Okay, maybe we are. But <laughs> yeah, I make a lot of bold predictions. It comes to the territory, but anyways, yep. obviously, when it comes to Overwatch Two, the big question is. How drastic are the changes to the base game actually going to be? And is it going to be too much? Now, obviously, during the behind-the-scenes footage that we saw, they introduced roll passives. Uh, tanks basically have it more uh, knockback resistance, so they're not going to get booped around to the high heavens like they had been for the past couple mm-hmm. of years. And, you know, even with the re- recent Wrecking Ball nerfs, um... It's still there. It's not as terrible as as it once was, but, like, you still feel it. Uh, They also gave, you know, damage dealers more movement speed. They were talking about giving healers passive healing or self-healing to themselves, similar to to, to Mercy in that case. And, you know, Mm -hmm. we we don't know if they're going to differentiate if her passive is going to be just better because it was already here passive to begin with or it's just streamlined across the board and then they talked about the reinhardt changes and how different he's going to feel because they want to move tanks into more of a brawler type hero and they talked about the the double fire strike being able to cancel your charge and just being able to be more in your face more aggressive and just be more hands-on as a brawler, as opposed to constantly having to worry about shielding your team. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, that's that's the tank's role for, for, for one. I'm not saying it has to be all of the time. But it's interesting that we're going back to the brawler type approach of this. Because at one point, D.Va was kind of like that brawler bully at one point. Way yeah. back in the day before we saw like 18 different iterations of the hero design. But it just, it really makes... You wonder, okay, so if they're doing that for Reinhardt, can we expect to see that happen across the board for the hero pool? Like, what are they going to do to Roadhog? Like, that's probably the biggest question in regards to the tank light. Is he going to remain a brawler, or is he going to be more DPS? What's his deal? But I I guess my question, Ed, for you would be, how much change do you feel is necessary at a baseline level for for the game to feel different to you? I, I think a, a pretty drastic amount of change, to be honest. Like, I think a lot of the characters ca- should get, like, the Reinhardt treatment. Um, uh, uh, mainly the, the, the new heroes. Uh, not, sorry, the new heroes. The old heroes. Like, the, the OG heroes. Uh, because you do, like, as much as people don't, like talking about this and and we brought it up is power creep is a thing Mm -hmm. so you either need to nerf uh nerf all the new heroes or you need to adjust the old heroes to to get up to that power level and i think that's where reinhardt goes um and and people may be thinking well this just makes him the automatic go-to main tank in the game you're forgetting they're adding a bunch of new heroes we don't know about right now so we could get somebody, a shield tank that is even better than Reinhardt with two, you know, like with uh, two fire strikes and being able to stop his charge whenever he wants. Like we may get that. We don't know. Um, you, you know, like for instance, I think Roadhog, what they should do with Roadhog, this is just me, is you basically make him a meat shield. So you reduce 
the amount of ult charge he takes and the amount of damage he takes. Okay, so he can be a, like a main tank. Um, kind of like a druid in, in World of Warcraft. Like, you know, they're one of the, the tank classes that doesn't have like a shield or heavy armor. You know what I mean? So you, you kind of treat it a little bit like that. Like, you know, he doesn't become an ult, you know, ult charge. Like, hey, there's a Roadhog. Let's everyone farm our ults on him. Right. Um, but he can also be a main tank then, and you you just, like, he takes reduced damage from enemy fire. Mm -hmm. So he can be that frontline person and, and stuff like that. So there's stuff, a lot of stuff like that that they could do, and obviously devs are way smarter than, than me and you when it comes to balancing and, and stuff like that, but I think a lot of pretty drastic changes need to occur. Yeah, I'm just curious to see if it's going to be... All right, well, we learned two things about Reinhardt. If that's going to be, like, a number that they have in mind uh, for every hero within the game at this point in regards to making changes uh, to just mix things up and shake things up a little bit. Uh, now, obviously, at, <laughs> with any game, you know, we have to talk about microtransactions or just ways that they can... You know, look to rake in more money. You know, right now we have the loot box model, which isn't terrible. <laughs> um, I, I think over time, it probably hasn't held on as strong just because, you know, obviously players have more levels. They've got more loot boxes over the course of time. And, you know, not even to mention, you know, since some countries consider it a gambling, some countries don't even have that as uh, in as an option and if the push is pve you know we've we've seen a number of titles that either release a dlc which isn't the overwatch way of doing things because they basically said hey every map every hero ever release is going to be free basically um, yes we're not going to see that but Knowing that we are going to be leveling characters, you know, it opens up things to, say, you know, XP boost, which we've seen in uh, other PvP games. Uh, I mean, hell, they even had that in Heroes of the Storm, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we've also seen a lot of Battle Pass-type system. Uh, and, you know, we actually just had it very recently introduced into Hearthstone. And uh, I think we're better off in Hearthstone 4 getting that battle pass. As, um, as I, much as other people would like to disagree <laughs> because of the overall value, but yes. Like, people just want to complain about anything. Yeah, I mean, anything, it's, it's the internet. Anything, <laughs> anything that's not free in a video game, people are going to complain about. You know? Um, do I think we're going to get... Uh, like, I, to me, I think the best course of action is probably a battle pass. But the only thing is, is uh, battle passes are generally reserved for free-to-play games. Your yes. harsh, your Apex, and stuff like that. But then you also have stuff like Call of Duty, uh, which is not a free-to-play game. Oh, wait, Warzone, I think, is free-to-play. Mm -hmm. So Warzone is free-to-play, and that has a battle pass. So yeah, like I, I think the battle pass is a good system. But what it would have to be is you would have to make Overwatch base, like Overwatch 1 or Overwatch base, free. I, I don't think that is going to be an issue. I'm pretty sure that's the direction that they will take things. Yes, but if you introduce Overwatch 1 as the all the PvP, all the heroes, all the maps free then you are more than welcome to introduce a battle pass. Um, and I think, uh, to me, that's probably their best course of action. It's just, I, I guess for me, the thing with the battle pass for the PvP side would be, what is the incentive to purchase it? Like, because in the past with the weekly challenges, um, you know, it's basically been, okay, you get a flare icon, a spray, you can get a skin. See, and, and it would have to be all cosmetics. That what they'd have to do is completely get rid of loot boxes. Yeah. Like, loot boxes would have to be gone from the game. 
and you would have to play basically just battle pass so it'd be cosmetic only because obviously you can't do pay to win um and i think cosmetics is is the way to go with that so like the the only way they're going to make money is through cosmetics uh i mean look at honestly let's look at fortnite fortnite is a billion dollar company because of cosmetics mm-hmm like so if if Overwatch wants to make money you make Overwatch 1 free you still charge probably like 29.99 for Overwatch 2 and then you have a battle pass I think that's the best course of action Yeah and if they do incorporate a battle pass it does open the door for a quest type system mm-hmm. which we've already technically seen with weekly challenges uh for some of these events yeah. So but like, whatever those would be would probably just be exclusive to Battle Pass. Yeah, and you can do stuff like deal ten thousand damage. You know, you know, it can. It doesn't have to be character specific. It can be overall generic. Mm-hmm. You know, play, play for, like you could have daily and weekly. Like win five matches for a weekly. Like, all right, cool. Let's do that. So, I I think that's a smart way to go about it. Yeah, I don't I don't think the loot box system is going to be here to stay. It's dead. The loot box system is dead. I don't know anyone who is buying loot boxes. And like in the <laughs> past year, because here's the <laughs> thing: is <laughs> we are not going to count the BlizzCon bundle, people. <laughs> yeah, the outside of the BlizzCon bundle, um, it's just like the people you're not getting an influx of new players who need to catch up on skins. Most of your player base has been playing this game for years and they have ridiculous amount of skins already. And, and then on top of that, they have the currency to buy any skin they want. So yeah, no loot boxes are dead. Yeah. And the currency they could technically, um, so keep I, if they I, want to make, like, they could still keep currency if they want players to play it, and, like, maybe they just set the threshold to purchase a battle pass to a set amount, or have the option yeah. to, you know, buy it via cash. Yeah. You know, to, like, like, what we like... would see with, like, a new hero in, like, um, like Apex. Yeah, it's, it's kind of almost, um, it's like uh, Valorant. You know, you can, you, you don't buy the, I mean, you can buy like the opening battle pass, but like you can either earn what is called radiant points or you can buy them. And then it's not like you use them to buy battle pass stuff, like, uh, or just cosmetics. You can use them for anything. Mm -hmm. And I think that could, the, the overwatch bucks. Yeah, the the other thing I am curious about, because, like, we're both predicting the PvP side of the game to go free-to-play at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, whether or not that's going to be before Overwatch 2, who knows at this point. Uh, but in Overwatch's lifespan, we have seen a number of occasions where we have had free-to-play weekends. And what happens after every period of that? The game goes on sale for half off. Mm-hmm. Now, if I was a betting man, which I am, knowing that PvE is the thing that you're trying to sell people on, I'm not going to rule out Blizzard being like, okay, let's give them a taste. Let's give them a couple of missions for them to try for free for the hero missions. Just so if you are someone who hasn't bought the game and you are PvP exclusive and you are curious or just want to try it, you can hop in and, you know, maybe they'll still get your money. Maybe they'll be able to sell you on the idea, but it can't be anything too extensive. Because even even like the free-to-play weekend, um, you know, you couldn't play competitive. And, you know, if you were to purchase it, you know, your progression would carry over. But do not do not rule out them being like, all right, we're going to give them a couple of missions. Let them try it out. 
Maybe we'll get a sale off of it. If not, it's not it's not a loss. You know, you don't have anything to lose by doing any sort of trial. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that is even a gamble. I think that's a guarantee. That's just a matter of at what point do they implement it. Yeah, it's like it is 100% a guarantee to happen. So, yep, it is definitely, definitely going to happen. So, it, you know, you nailed it right on the head. So, really, the only other question I have at this point. Okay, okay. so obviously right now, esports um, for Overwatch, purely PvP. Probably quite haven't hit our goals as to what we would like to see, uh, viewer-wise. <laughs> that we know of. We don't have the internal numbers, yeah. I will say that, because we don't have the China numbers, we truly. Don't. But we have seen the Blizzard titles in the past start as PvP and differentiate, most notably yep. World of Warcraft, going from arenas... Uh, you know, primarily 3v3 was the staple uh, for esports anyway. Now going into the MDI, which is, you know, the Mythic Dungeon Invitational. Which is, I think, much, much more popular than Arena was. Yes. And I remember when, like, MDI started, and I, I first heard about it, I was just like... I, I didn't see the... Like, what the interest and in it would be, personally. Exactly. But when I tuned in, I was pleasantly surprised. So it, it, it just makes you think, you know, we, we've heard the PvP player base be disgruntled at various parts of the, of the lifespan for Overwatch 1 at this point. And knowing the direction that Overwatch 2 was taken... Obviously, there are some tough decisions to be made if you are an esports player. We've already seen a number of Overwatch League talent go into other titles. Um, some work out way better than others, just saying. Mm -hmm. Especially when it comes to Valorant. <clears throat> Rock, <laughs> I mean, Rock is definitely the first person that comes to mind. Uh, but, no, you know, Zachary, you know, Zachary's, uh, Zachary's Zachary. also there. But, you know, for for, for Corey, so for Corey Rock. and Sinatra, you know, it's worked, it's worked out better yes. uh, in, in those cases. But we've already seen a number of departures. And I would just be curious to see what, what would happen in a situation where we see a structure similar to the MDI. For the PvE side of Overwatch 2, where, you know, we have our four-man missions, you have your uh, fixes that are ramped up, obviously, based off of difficulty, and we're just seeing who can complete the mission first, and then that's going to be our new competitive-type mode for Overwatch, and PvP is just kind of shoved to the wayside. I, 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 I don't know if that's a direction I want to see... But it's there. <laughs> yeah, so here's here's my issue with that is Overwatch PvP esports is so defined and set in stone and like mm -hmm. has its place. Arena really didn't. Like Arena was like, okay, yeah, this is the only thing we can really do for esports. And then the Honestly, it wasn't even the Mythic Dungeons that brought this in. It was the the growing popularity of the world first race for raids. Right. And then that spawned into Mythic Dungeons. And, you know, yes, they still have Arena, but it's not the same. Small scale. Yeah, it's a small scale compared to the MDI, almost. And I don't see the Overwatch, you know, PvE turning something that is as big as as the Overwatch League mm -hmm. into something that they is just non-existent. Um you know, and and I don't think that they can coexist together on a large scale. 
because what are you going to do? Because like, for instance, for an organization, you would have to ban the sh- the shock players would be banned from competing in these MDI type events. They would have to sign a whole different like team just for the MDIs or the PVE, whatever you would call it. Like you, you would have to ban your your players from competing in the MDIs, and then there would be the whole, "Hey, well, I want to see the best PvP team take on this PVE thing," and the teams are just not allowing it. And it, I think it would cause some animosity. Do I think there will be like a, a an, almost an MDI type of thing with Overwatch? Yes, I do. I do think we will get some form of esport with it. I do not expect it to be that big. Yeah, I wanna. I just. I want to know primarily if the hero missions themselves are in custom game modes. Like, would we be able to go in, set our own values for like health, damage, affixes, mm. things like that, um, and just set up our own custom game modes with it? Because that would really open the door to seeing events like the M- uh, MDI pop up for PVE Overwatch 2. Um if that's not the case then obviously it would be harder to really organize that unless you know Blizzard was the one putting it on. Uh but you know we, we of, of course like with tier 2 or just community driven events uh you know we have seen a number pop up here and there but it's all been PVP specific because that's what we have in the game right now. Uh but I I I want to see just how crazy the difficulty gets with the PvE content because that could determine just how much of a competitive nature can be involved in it. Yeah, it it will be interesting to see how it does. I I I mean, I can watch I don't know what it, the thing is is an MDI type of thing, the other big advantage to the MDI type of thing is the amount of time you have to spend watching it mm-hmm. is drastically reduced. Right. And that is huge for esports. Like, I, I love Overwatch esports uh, from the PvP side, and I love Valorant esports. But I don't have nine hours on a Saturday to watch four matches. Are you talking like, about Valorant or are you talking both. about Overwatch? <laughs> both. Because I know, I know in the times that I've tuned into Valorant, which isn't that often, the rounds just feel like they take forever. Oh, dude, Valorant takes way more, way, way longer than uh, um, Overwatch. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's it's definitely gonna be be interesting to see what what becomes of it. But again, this is all guesses because they haven't told us crap. They've told us fluff. Yes. They've told us fluff. <laughs> it's, been, it's the best way to put it. Uh, but anyways, you know, that, that was basically all the points that at least I want to talk about tonight. Um, I, I do want to update you guys on our recording schedule. Obviously, um, you know, we've recorded on Sunday for our recap show, so if you guys want to hear us talk about more uh, at-length discussion about everything that we learned in the -the behind-the-scenes stuff at BlizzCon Line, be sure to check that out. That is available on the podcast feed. Uh, As for next week, Ednar is going to be in Florida, so we are not recording Heroes Never Die uh, next week, so it will be an off week. We'll probably be back the week after. Mm -hmm. Uh, But, you know, right now... We're in a lull. It's We're in the lull. <laughs> it's basically like, hey, yeah, we got uh, an experimental patch that went live with changes, but like, that's literally five minutes worth of talking. Uh, and it's not worth it to do a whole show just on experimental changes. Um. So yeah, it, it's it's kind of like a, you know, it's a it's a lull. That's basically what it is. I should go on a quest to find an arcade mode that you actually like. (laughs) 
Well, if it's not 12 <laughs> hogs, one hole. Oh, I... When I saw that at the BlizzCon line, <laughs> I was like, just like, you gotta this is kid. immediately the just, worst uh, event. I just I'm remember sorry. messaging you. I was like, oh, your favorite game mode. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that shock versus the world thing it was, was legit the yeah, worst was, shit I've ever seen. It, it was pretty much unbearable. Um, But there there is a, an arcade mode. And, you know, I kind of tuned in a little bit. I didn't watch the entire theme, but they did have a workshop panel. And one of the modes that was talked about was like a a Hammond's racing game, which was more in line of like Mario Kart. And that's when I really want to try. Because I feel like that one would be obviously just more fun, more chaotic. And a yeah. lot less stressful and agonizing as, as that Roadhog one that we tried. Yep, never again. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, but just as a reminder, we are off next week. Probably be back the week after that. Uh, so, yeah. I think it's time yeah. that we go ahead and close out the show for tonight. So, if you guys want to help us out, please do us a favor. Head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. Uh, you know, we, we've done a few of these. A couple. You've done a couple, too? Yes, I have. Not not quite as many, but, you know, it's more than some of the other hosts <laughs> at this point. Uh, but, you know, you know, since we are in a drought, obviously we're looking for things to talk about. So if anyone has any suggestions in regards to things you would like to see, if you just want to come on and talk Overwatch, reach out to us. We are all ears on that front. And, of course, we're just looking for ways to improve the show to make for a better listening experience for you guys. And if you would like to show support, uh, you can do so via Patreon, where we have tiers starting at just $1 a month. You can find more information there on our Patreon site at patreon.com slash network, where you two can join the likes of our master and above patrons, Daniel, Owl, and Kesha, in helping our network grow. Uh, we, we do have a podcast coming back shortly. Mm -hmm. Since the Overwatch League will be back, obviously we'll have OW All About the Numbers back for Fantasy Overwatch League with Ramses, Edinar, and myself. Which I'm sure Ramses will just continue the trend of just always playing the third wheel and just constantly losing to it. So you got a, a whole other season to look forward to on that front. <laughs> uh, but Ed, why don't you go ahead and let our listeners know how they can contact us via social media. All right, so you can reach us through email at hndoverwatch at gmail.com. Uh, we are on Twitter, and that's at, at hndoverwatch. Uh, we do have a website you can go to, and that's owrecall.com. Uh, we have a YouTube, youtube.com slash Overwatch League Network. Uh, you can join us at Discord at discord.me slash show. Uh, we do stream live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash show. We are a Twitch affiliate, so help support the show by subscribing to our channel and earn our network emoticon. A podcast network does stream pretty regularly, so we have the Overwatch League Network is Mondays at 6 p.m. Pacific. OWL by the numbers, which will be coming back, is on Tuesdays. And then this show here is Never Die, airs Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific. And then Totem and I have a Hearthstone Battlegrounds podcast called Tavern Tales, which presently airs at 5 p.m. Pacific over at twitch.tv slash Tavern Tales HS, which might be moving to Thursdays because OWL by the numbers is coming back and all that fun stuff. Uh, you can reach me personally on Twitter, and that's at, at Ednar83, or at twitch.tv slash Ednar. Totem, where can they find you? Well, you can find me over on Twitter. Uh, that'd be at Tumbly Drunk. Same as Twitch, twitch.tv slash Tumbly Drunk. And uh, yeah, that does it for us here tonight. You have been listening to episode 233. Oh, man. That's a, that's a lot of shows. Mm-hmm. It is a lot of shows. That's also a lot of it. That's, that's an entirely different discussion. But that will do it for us here tonight. We'll see you guys back in two weeks. Who knows? Maybe we'll have an experimental card to talk about for five minutes then. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. Or, or maybe it'll just come out next week and then it will already be patched live because that tends to happen too. So, that so is there, also very true. Uh, but you guys take care. Have a good night. And uh, go get your loot boxes for the event. You're running out of time. Yes. Can't forget that. All right. Take care, guys. Take care.